Hello everyone, Hi Arcaria here, bringing you a 1v1 cast uh, from my good friend Wargwolf, but he doesn't seem to be uh, doing anything. Okay, so it, I don't, I didn't really like that slow start there. It was about 20 seconds late, but eh, you know, ZVZ doesn't really matter. No, actually, it does matter in ZVZ. I'm pretty sure if we're behind a little bit, then it's. Uh, it's a lot of problems. So let's introduce the player spawning on the bottom uh, right corner. We have my good friend Wargwolf, and spawning on the top left corner we have Tarn. I probably butcher these people's names so much that it, it's not even going to be funny, but but whatever. Apparently uh, Wargwolf lagged, so that's not good. Uh, we have a ZVZ here on. I think this is called Condemned Ridge. I don't know, I don't really get this map a lot. I never really thumbs it down, but it's just not that common. At least not for me. Uh, let's bring up the production tab. Over here we do see that Orgwolf is a little bit behind. Uh, the pool is a lot earlier for, for our Blue Zerg here. Both players seem to be going for similar builds. Well, I can't really tell yet because, well, Orgwolf's 20 seconds behind. Now we do see an early gas here. This is either going to be a speedling expand or going to be coming. Uh, this is probably going to be some early speedling pressure. Uh, this is pretty standard for for ZVZ. There's no cheese going on. Although cheesing on this map is not really common, just because of the map size and how it's a four-player map uh, with four spawns. So likely you're not going to be going to the right base if you do a, something like a seven pull. Uh, gas is finished here for our blue zerg. But he's not mining from it, so I, I don't really know what's what's happening here. I believe this is a silver level game, although I'm not really sure. Uh, it does seem that we have hatchery first coming from uh, Wargwolf. This is going to help even out the score a little bit because of his late 20 second start. <laughs> uh, we do see the Overlord here scouting from both players actually. Uh, we do have a drone scout coming off from our blue zerg and the pool going down. So this pool is a lot later than our blue player, but our blue player haven't really uh, made any use out of the spawning pool yet. Just now starting to gather gas, putting only two drones on here. I don't know if this is intentional or just a misclick or miscount. We do have the queen here out for our blue player. He is floating quite a bit of minerals. It seems, uh, I don't know what he seems to want to do with this. Our red player seems to be floating quite a bit of minerals too. Although this is uh, getting a double gas here for our red player. I don't really know what he has planned for that. Zerg generally don't tend to need gas that early on, but Zerg is a pretty gas heavy race. So I wouldn't be surprised if he just got those gas early so that he wouldn't be low on gas when he decides to get those Imbafesters or those Mutas out. We do have this drone here scouting out what our red player is doing. Although there's not really much he can see. It's pretty standard stuff. Although this is an early hatch, so our blue player could do something to punish this, especially since it's already 20 seconds delayed. Uh, our blue player, interestingly, picking this base out here in the middle of nowhere as is the natural instead of the actual natural. Uh, interesting. If you want to hide a hatch, you should probably hide it somewhere, you know, easier to hide. I guess this is a good balance between hiding and reinforced distance. Looks like there's going to be some zerglings moving out across the map here, trying to apply some early pressure. This is quite a big deal since... Well, there's no creep connecting the bases, but these lings don't have speed yet. Speed is... Well, speed is actually ahead for our red player, which is not expected at all since he got the hatch before the pool. And also he was behind. This queen's off creep for some reason. Uh, oh, it got one kill, so it was probably trying to kill off an overlord. Well, it, it did kill an overlord. Uh, I would like to see some creep connecting these bases here, even though this is a pretty short distance. Creep does help a lot, especially for queens when reinforcing our bases. Lings are um, uh, Ling speed's almost done. I don't know what our blue player is planning here. Uh, he is moving out with a lot of lings though. Uh, the other queen should probably come down here to help defend this. The lings are probably going to get us around on this queen. Uh, actually, no, they are not. This is a pretty good position for the queen, although it, it could be better. These lings are kind of being dumb right now. Our red player is going to lose quite a few drones here. The lings are coming up to the main now. Uh, the zergling speed is almost done for our red player here. Uh, these drones will probably evacuate. Oh, the queen is doing a good job killing all the lings. No, do not engage the zerglings with the drone. Get back with the drone. If your drones are aggroing on the lings, then th they're going to get owned. 
just as much as your lings are. You should probably put your drones on hold position. Uh, just for anyone who might want advice on this, if you should probably put your drone on hold position so that they they're lower on the aggro list. That way the links have to walk around the drones. Say if the queen is aggroing, just put your drones around the queen so that the links can actually get at the queen. So that way you have a wall of sort of non-aggro units around the queen so the zergling is really hard to attack the queen. It, it'll have to manually attack the drones to make surface area to attack the queen with. Uh, anyways, over here we do see a lot of links from our red player and some banglings morphing in. Blue continuing to pressure with zerglings. Uh, this isn't going to work because of the amount of banglings on the field I would say. Mining this gas, getting the early gas and the early pool while not getting the metabolic boost. I do not agree with that one bit. Uh, right now teching up to Spire. Seems like Blue does have quite a nice t uh, tech advantage. Our red player don't even have a layer yet. I really li would like to see this creep connected. Uh, we do see a lot of links moving out though. This is going to be a bad day for Blue if he tries to move up this ramp with this many links that are clumped up. Although he is getting two separate sections. These main links- oh that's a nice hit. And here we get another sort of okay hit. At this point I don't even know if uh, that Baneling was kind of a waste. I, I don't really know if it's worth it to go Banelings against these Lings if he's just sending four at a time like this. Uh, if you see, uh, bring up the units tab, I still don't know my hotkeys. We see 27 drones to 23 so our red player is still behind on drones. Although speed is done for our red player so he can't start putting on the pressure right now. Over here we do see the Rotro Iron going down for our blue player. Putting three drones on each gas now. Like you should. Instead of two on the first one. I don't really know what's the plan for that gas. Uh, our red player seems to have forgotten about these gas. But right now, I don't think he needs gas. He probably needs minerals to get some defense up. Although I would really like to see a layer. This is pre- uh, He's actually talking to me right now. But yeah, this is about 10 minutes. It's pretty late for a layer. Uh, we do have the evolution chamber coming down. And the Roach Warren here, probably, we're actually getting some mutas out. So, the drone counts, uh, oh, but a lack of rally here is going to cost them a lot of mining time. We do have three mutas coming out in the middle of the field. I'm pretty sure the queens can handle that. Uh, our blue player is floating a lot of minerals and gas. I think he was floating a little bit earlier. I think he was floating a lot earlier. Uh, well, when my friend actually, uh, our, our red player actually messaged me. But since he messaged me, I didn't really mention that. We do see a blue player keeping up with his injects. Uh, let's go on to, no, that's a pause. I don't know my hockey's for replays. Okay, so production tab, we show mutalisks, and apparently we do have spore crawlers coming out. Is this just a good game sense, or is it a, a re? Let's see the red player's camera for a second. Uh, we do have the spire scouted over here. Red player has the tower. Uh, I would agree with this, even though this is a cross bonds. This does give a nice vision of the attack path, although it's kind of easy to avoid. I would probably say put two lings here instead of one. So that if the opponent tries to grab this with one zergling, then the two zerglings will win against the one zergling. But tying up four lings on one watchtower, I don't know if I agree with that. Let's bring it back to the everyone cam. Our blue player continues to make uh, mutas, and we do see the Imbefestation Pit going down for our blue player, while our red player is actually getting his lair right now. That's good, and keeping up with the upgrades with a plus one melee attack. What's our upgrades looking for our, our blue player here? We have zero, zero, and actually he has no units. He just have a couple of mutas. This queen survived being killed. That's the world's luckiest queen right now. We have four mutas out, and we have 12 lings on the way for our red player, and seven mutas out for our blue player on the way. Uh, this could be trouble for our red player if he does not get any anti-air right now. He does have a lot of queens, so this, he should be fine. Uh, might be able to snipe some tech structures. I do like to see better creep spread. In ZVZ, creep spread is actually optional, because it gives your opponent just as much advantage, but it is, the vision it grants is nice. And also it gives the player, the defending player an advantage because of how, how fast queens move on creep compared to off creep. We have our third base going on for both players right now. Blues is a, a little bit ahead. Uh, let's bring up the units lost count. We do see our red player has lost a lot more. I don't really know what to say about that. 
he just lost more. Uh, these mutas are actually going to cause quite a lot of pain if they get into red player's base. He does have two spore crawlers in position to defend. Uh, putting drones back in this gas. We have a counter attack here at the natural of our blue player. Really should be going for the drones and leaving the hatcheries for later. There'd be much more damage dealt to the drones if you just target the drones. Uh, I do like going after these drones, although really should be not a moving and yeah, you should be going like this to try and uh, hit the drones. Or he's actually just going to go for the other hatchery. This hatchery is going to go down. There's no way these mutas have enough DPS to bring down these this many lings. So the hatchery does fall. The lings run back. I don't know. Sacrificing a few lings were... Well, actually, the mutas are back, so... That, that would be the right decision to make. I would have probably stayed around to kill some drones. Let's actually take a look at the units tab. We do have 35 drones to 48 or 9. I can't really tell since I'm pretty far away from the screen. Uh, creep spread is really, uh, I would say, acceptable for our red player right now. Creep spread is non-existent for our blue player, so uh, that's a bad thing. You, just, you should at least connect these bases. I can understand if you don't want to spread creep to your hidden base, just to not give it away, but you should connect your main bases in case the red player decides to get muted. We do have a muted harass coming in from the side. All the hiders and queens are going to be in position to defend this. Our red player is going to take absolutely no damage from this. Uh, might lose a couple of drones over here. Now they're going after the spore crawler. I don't know. The blue player should just back off right now. I do like. I would. It would be nice to see some imbefesters from our red player right now to lock down those mutas with a fungal growth, so that the hydras can deal their damage and take all of the mutas. Mutas flying out uh, right over these zerglings, saying, "Really, I don't care at all about those lings." Our blue player is continue to continuing to make, well I guess he's not making mutas, but he has a couple of mutas here and there. Uh, what's this? We do have an ultralisk cavern coming out for our blue player as well as the greater spire. Going double hive tech here. I really would like to see some more units out of our blue player. Both player floating quite a bit of resources. Um, mostly our red player. I would like to see better creep spread covering your entire main base so you can place buildings more easily. As well as provide visions uh, in case of a drop. I guess uh, Zerg don't really do drops, but I do like to cover my basic creep. This base here needs some anti air. Uh, as you can see here, the mutas are going to be killing quite a few drones, but the hydras are going to force them away. There's just two spore crawlers in place, although I don't know where the queen went. These spore crawlers should be able to buy enough time for the hydras to get back here to defend. I do like this kind of harass from our blue player right now. Those mutas are kind of stuck here. Might be able to get these two overlords. We do have another counter attack from red. This is very nice. I myself don't really do enough counter attacks when I play as Zerg. Probably because I don't have the units to spare. And also because I go all roaches. <laughs> but yeah, this space is going to fall for our blue player again. Uh, let's take a look at the units lost tab. Our blue player is actually behind in the units lost tab now. Probably just because of the amount of hatcheries that went down. We do have a lot of roaches out for our blue player. Let's take a look at the units count. Our blue player refuses to drone up at all. Apparently being happy with 31 drones. Our red player is sitting at 50 drones, 49 drones. This is a pretty good number. For at least for this league, especially since he's floating this much minerals. What I would like to see is some, probably some more spores laid out for defense against these mutas. Just because of how much money he's floating. Probably put down another macro hatch. And just getting, well teching up for one, uh, mining these gas, mining these gas, well those gas are being mined, taking these two geysers would be nice. Now they're really getting a bunch of links can probably end the game right now. This one ultra isn't going to do much. Uh, I'd like to see more evo chambers, I believe you still just have the one. Let's take a look at upgrades for both players. We do have a plus one range attack for our red player, and we have the plus one, no we have actually have the plus two ground melee attack. Yeah. Uh, for a blue player who decides to hate upgrades, we have absolutely nothing. I would say this game favors the red player right now greatly, just because these mutas are sort of locked down here with nothing to do, and the blue player just has absolutely no upgrades. Although I would like to see some ultra tech coming out of our red player to th make use of that plus one uh, ground attack, or plus two ground attack, or just get some lings too. But Hydra's I would also like to see some carapace upgrades just because the mutas do bounce damage so they're getting plus one armor would increase the defense by three. 
effectively. And over here we have roaches, lings, and we, have, we do have a couple of GG lores going up. I wouldn't say this is a great idea considering how many hydras are on the field. I'm pretty sure the blue player should notice the amount of hydras on the field f from all this muta harass. But yeah, also non-existent creep spread. This is actually almost connected for some reason. So I guess this map isn't really balanced because this creep connects a lot better than on, on here. This is actually connected by this creep tumor, but I think the whole ramp was not creeped. Well, this is just like a third of the ramp that's not creeped. So, map Inva. <laughs> we do have a lot of things on production. Oh, no, wait. That's not production. That's units. I don't know what I'm talking about. We have a lot of ultralisks. We have three, and we have three roaches. Our blue player is just getting everything, basically. Uh, drone count for our red player is nice. I think at this point our red player can actually go mass queen and win. Although I would like to, actually I do like to see some queens mixed in. I kind of want to see some hive tech. Uh, maybe ultralisk would be a good choice right now. Actually, uh, I think GG lords would be a better choice right now because of how much. Well, the links are going to come in here and see all the ultralisks. But yeah, I say GG lords are better for at uh, this point in time just because there's not much anti air out for our blue player. Although our red player does have a lot of anti air up. Actually, all of the anti-air. Uh, a very big push coming off from our blue player. GG lords are going to take a really long time to make it across the map. We've got one corruptor for anti-air. Although, our red player don't really have much air. I would say our red player can hold this off very well. Well, primarily because of the plus one uh, range attack. While our blue player has absolutely nothing in terms of upgrades. And he's putting his stuff right beside the tower where the red player can see it. So... Uh, these drones should really go back to work over there. Ultralis, not the best against Hydras, although I would, li I would like to see some Roaches to buffer the damage from the Zerglings while the Hydras deal their damage. Uh, we do have one Imbafester out. Should be able to hold down the Zerglings with the Fungal Growth. Uh, I would like to see some Hydra spread just so the Ultralis don't deal their splash damage, although Blue Player deciding to be a coward no, I'm actually just waiting for a GG Lord. But yeah, focusing down the Ultralisks, that's uh, a good choice, I would say. GG Lord, our Imbafest, uh, GG Lord taking out the Imbafester there. A little bit careless from our red player. Do not attack the Broodlings. Go for the GG Lords. Come on. Come on. Don't aim move. You can do it. You can do it. This is way too many Hydras to be losing the GG Lords like this. Manually target the GG Lords. There we go. And our blue player deciding to be a hater of expansions, and a hater of drones, and a hater of upgrades, and just a hater in general. Also a hater of creep spread. Uh, decides to sit here and make more lings and ultralisks. Let's see the production tab. No, that's a pause button. Okay, production tab shows nothing for our blue player. Let's take a look at APM tab. What's he doing? He has... Well, he had 11 there for a second. Our blue player actually has more APM than our red player. Although our red player has more bases right now, I'd like to see some creep spread connecting the, the bases, although at this point it doesn't really matter. H Hydralisks uh, with the plus one armor and the plus two attack. This is going to be GG when, it, when they attack. I can't see any way our blue player can hold against this kind of this number of Hydras. Maybe if our red player just doesn't care about the Ultralisks, although there are a couple of Roaches out. Hydras go really well with Roaches. Pure Hydras I find is too squishy, so I would like to see some Roaches with this Hydra army. We have a GG Lord morphing in right now. Yeah, the Ultralisk dies immediately, and here are the Roaches against the Hydras. They're actually doing quite a good job against these Hydras. Again, just uh, seeing how squishy these Hydras are. I don't really know what will happen here. It seems like the blue player is not going to stand. He should just leave right now. Although, these, yeah, there is a number of Roaches here, so he's going to be able to hold this. That's the thing with this kind of low level games. People either leave way too early or people just don't leave at all and they drag the game on. Sure, you can beat this Hydras with this number of Roaches, but after you beat this Hydras, what are you going to do? Your opponent's on four bases, you're on one right now. You have an a uh, upgrade disadvantage, your main's mined out. You have no minerals for a hatchery, so you're going to have to long distance mine with your whopping... What? Where are these drones, actually? Okay. I can't find these drones. Where are the 31 drones? Oh, I can't find- Oh, they're actually in the battle right now. 
So we're gonna have to long distance mine from here to get another hatchery. We didn't manage to clean out these zerglings though. Uh, these queens are not going to make it over there in time. I believe our red player should have... Yeah, this is definitely enough to hold. Taking a look at the units tab. We're already at the units tab. We have 22 lings for our red player. 34 hydras against 15 roaches. Leave the game! Blue! Although really red is floating over 7,000 minerals. Although I kind of float a lot of minerals in my late game too. So I shouldn't be talking about that. Come on, Blue, just leave the game. You lost already. You can wait for the queens all you want. But the more time you wait, the more army Red's going to get. Look at the supply d difference right now. We have over 100 supply advantage for Red. Even though he's got 20 of those in drones. I think the only way that Blue can possibly win this is possibly for these Hydras to be split into about 6 different squads. And to, for Red to engage this separately with those six squads. One at a time. But that's not happening right now. We do have Banelings for Red. That's going to uh, roll over all the drones immediately. Oh, that feels good. And an offensive GG from our Red player. I do agree with this. Blue should have left a really long time ago. There, he's gone. Although, really, at this level, I don't know if this GG is offensive or is just saying... Yeah, uh, that's a really nice CVZ there. Not really standard at all. I don't see Mass Hydra from from Zerg in ZVZ. Usually you see Roaches and Imbefesters if it gets that far. My ZVZs usually end with the early pool. You know how my ZVZs end. Anyways, so that was a nice game. Uh, if you want me to cast your games, then email them to me or whatever. Uh, I guess I'll see you guys next time.